So take two. Here is the situation from the scenario released from the east. It's the last and sixth scenario from ASL Starter Kit 1. What do we have? Well, this is uh, the river uh, Istra. It's near the river Istra, a medieval town. I guess it's called Istra itself. And the Germans are holding it. The Russians are counter-attacking to push them further back from Moscow, where they've been halted on these outskirts. And um, so essentially the Russians are going to come in here. This is considered the north edge. And the Germans have to hold these three buildings, at least two of them. If the Russians take two of the three, they win the scenario. They have five and a half turns in which to do that, which means they get the last turns done as a rush and the Germans get no reply. Um, now notice these are big buildings, the biggest, so um, they would have to complete, completely clear them of the enemy. So the Germans don't really have to worry, don't have to worry about these other buildings at all, except you know as um, stages towards these main buildings. So um, what are the forces? Well, uh, here's the scenario card released from the east. And here's the German forces. So they have nine elite squads. They're boxed elites, which, as an aside, I'm not sure what the box means. I'm sure it's around the E in the top right corner because there's three different types of elite units, some just with an E, some boxed, and some encircled. And I'm sure there's a difference in a full ASL, but I, I don't remember. It makes no difference as far as I can tell in starter kit. Well, I'm sure it doesn't because there isn't any. Different. So anyway, nine squads, um, a nine two leader, eight one leader, eight zero leader. So that's a good leader. The nine two and the eight one, a medium machine gun, three light machine guns. So the question, and they are up against fourteen also elite squads. The Germans have um extra hex of range, effective range, against. Um, the Russians, but otherwise they are evenly matched, similar leaders. The Russians only get two light machine guns. Theirs aren't quite, their machine guns are not quite as powerful as the German ones, but the Russians crucially get a demolitions charge, which might make all the difference in clearing one of those big buildings. So the Germans don't have a lot of units. There's all that space to the west, which they can probably ignore, but is there for flanking manoeuvres from the Russians, which, by the way, apparently are Siberians. They, I think at this point, or a little before, they were renamed, they were 78th Division, renamed 9th Guards Infantry. They're dressed in um, snow camouflage, so they have benefits for moving in the assault, moving in the open. Uh, although the Germans have... A crease of one on their broken morale so they're going to recover more quickly so you know they're rising they're sort of this is at their apex on the drive on moscow so they're very determined not to fall back from this position but what we're we going to do i'm going to have to take a while to think about it but um that i think the basic thought is is that take two um buildings and uh, defend them to the teeth and just put up token resistance in a third so you know the russians can't take it for a song and because the russians can outflank around here it would be quite good to make this the sort of token resistance but give enough resistance that they can't just move straight across the board unfired upon so we need some units maybe here or here and some in here to make them take time to get and take that one then their next one is obviously this one. This is closest to their board edge. That one's going to be the easiest to defend. Um, so the thought is to put heavy defense in there. On the other hand, um, maybe we should defend this one and this one because this one is the same problem as this one, really. Not that there's a flank, but the Russians could get to it quickly. So, you know, I'm going to have, have outline defenders as well as um, defenders probably inside because it's going to be hard to fall back um, across these streets. There's going to be, you know, if the Russians, say, 
moving squads to position here, then any defenders that are here would be fired upon as they're moving across the streets here to get back to defend there. So I think I'm always going to have to have one pit stop left there who won't be able to take part in the forward defence. So on the face of it, we have this situation. We have three squads and a light machine gun for each um, position. And then the question is, in descending, which is descending order of importance in which to put the leader in, leaders in in descending order of ability? And then the medium machine gun, which is our strongest defensive thing. Um, And I'm looking at it now, it might, the machine gun could, because this is a narrow building, you can have a fellow in the hex and he can fire at both sides. For example, if I had a machine gun this side of the building, it could fire it here and here, but it couldn't cover the other side. Same for this building, which seems to speak to putting the heavy machine gun here, and it could also move quite easy to cover the others. So I think that's what's going to happen. So I think that is actually going to be a key building, which then says, I don't know, because we could have to leave these groups isolated. They're essentially going to have to be isolated with one leader each. Um, now remember, we need to keep two buildings from the Russians, so I can't put everything in one. So I might have to space it out. So for example, put the medium machine gun here and the better leader here and so say right I want to hold those two at all costs which leaves that token defenders and I wonder if there's a way in that we can use some of these units to cover the defense of both of these that one's further away so I think that is going to be the plan and um, there's an interesting thing in, in that the Russian player can keep a tactical reserve up so they can take about a third of their force and keep it in tactical reserve, entering them on turn three. So that's halfway through the game. But then they can move them in on the north and or the east edge. So um, again, that is another consideration is that they don't just, if they do that, they don't just have to move down here. They can um, halfway through bring units through here. So what you might find is that they keep a third of their force off and if they see that's lightly defended, bring it on, take it quickly. If if it's heavily defended, then they would um, bring it on, support the other two thirds. So I can't leave anywhere too lightly defended. Because the other, th I think, because the other thing being that if, say, I use some of these forces here to bolster those, if I make this a difficult proposition to take, they're all three difficult propositions to take. So the Russian will have to decide on two. He's got no easy choice. Okay, so I think that's the basic plan. Um, uh, uh, depending on how a fine setup goes, I might adjust it more or less. But that's the thought, is that essentially these are separated forces. Um, archipelagos, if you wish, hopefully um, these two can support each other. And with machine gun here, maybe I can help support some advance, potential advance on that one. So this is my thoughts so far. Um, let me see if I can zoom in a bit. Yeah, I think we've got everyone in picture there, yeah. So I'll have to actually come out a bit so you can see what lines we're covering. So um, because in um, Startica SL that you have no what's called snapshots, um, essentially, because these buildings are adjacent, they're as good as connected. In the in full air cell, because you're moving through a gap, if a u if a unit had a a line of sight to that gap, they could get off a snapshot, which is a 
think it might be half firepower, but still they get you without the building cover as you go across. Not so in starter kit. So these ones are as good as connected. He can run from here to here to here, having the plus three protection of the building all the way. The same with them. So there was no point really to set them up there. Um, except they might get swamped on the first turn. I set them up here to so that they can essentially cover this, 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 and these hexes from incomings. Otherwise, they were going to have to cover the Russians who were already in um, terrain as good as theirs. Um, so, you know, putting them on a parity to them. They want to get them in the open if they can. Similarly, again, because of no snapshots, he can fall back. He's got trouble coming across here, but the idea is, is that he can either um, help defend along this line or he could fall back here and help defend any Russians crossing this street. He's probably not going to get across the street himself. He's got no, he, so he won't have the opportunity to be um, rallied by the leader. But he, that you get one south rally each turn. He, he's probably going to be the German one. So uh, a similar thought. I'm not too sure about this. Maybe he's better here, covering this area. And this area, yes, I think it's better there. So he can fall back. Um, he's got someone to fall back there. He's got nowhere to fall back to, only open ground. But the thought is, is I want to cover these gaps, these gaps here and these gaps here. And I think, yes, he's better off there. He could always possibly... Yeah, so I want to cover these gaps, these gaps, so... If he can fall back here and he can get some cover coming through the orchard if he is able to get back to the main building. So here we've got two squads stacked and the major machine gun. So that's deadly fire here and up to here. In fact, and the, he's just really covering that gap and a bit further along here. And also if the Russians come around here and then to this way, again, he can create bat stop there um and then over here again that thought no snapshots so he can easily move through these back to the building and likewise these so they are covering this space so if the Rus russians charge up to these they're going to get fire as they do so the things the russians are going to swamp somewhat some will get through some will get broken on the way He's he's obviously covering that just so they can't get an easy one through there, and he, um, if this gets swamped, he's covering there as well. But he he's more likely to depending on how the Russians come on. If they they're not coming down here, he'll move round to here. Um. So I think that's it for the German setup. So the next thing is then to work out the um. Elements of the Knights Guard Infantry Division's plan. Oh, interesting point. I think all this he knows before, the efficiency level rating has been three for both sides, which means they both reduce quality, quality of themselves upon the morale rolls similarly. But here, the Germans, they've got that plus one of morale and they've got an ELR of four, which means they're not going to decrease in quality so quickly relative to the Russians who are on that normal three. So these Germans are going to be very stalwart defenders. And yes, he could get cut off, he could get cut off, but they're going to rally quite nicely. Because being elite, they rally on an eight. With that plus one, they're rallying on a nine on 2d6. That is wonderful. Almost unheard of. So we'll. I think that speaks to having isolated units like this. And maybe I should, it does invite more. Maybe I should put him there, for example. Because he can cover that hex. No, he can't. There he can cover that hex. Well, he's covering that hex. I just wanted them to possibly have um, a fire group, but then Russians would never do it. Yeah, I think I'll put him there. And I put the leaders forward because I'm thinking they're... I could I could have put them back for the rally, but in fact he's gonna go back for the rally capability. 
because you have to think of your where your broken units are going to come back because they're going to want to come out of the front line so they don't they don't come out of desperation morale okay um i think that's it so i'll just turn this around and then we can look at the russian point of view that being this so yes they've got those woods over on the west there, got some woods covered, but you can hear they've got open spaces they have to cross to get on. So immediately we can see that this fellow's covering to here. He might well have line set here as well, but this is all uncovered. So we can come on here and filter through quite happily. Take that. And then don't forget we could have some guys coming on in the east. Maybe we do that, we, we just leave that one behind. We whiz around here, take that, and then if need be support attack on that. And once we've taken that, send, although there is quite more open ground there, but possibly send out units here to interdict any of these fellows that try to come across. Or essentially to pin them in there so they say look don't go and support them because we'll take that I like that plan but yeah so we keep that last third on just so that they get to three turns in which to, to move around off board and then come on on these ones which means the Germans will be kept waiting because they don't know I might send them still send them on here could send them on around here so that they, they won't be able to go there and sit waiting for them until really when I, I bring them on. Yes, okay, let's set up according to that then. Okay, so here is the Russian plan. Um, the tactical reserve is here, that in, so that's five elite squads, um, a light machine gun, a demolitions charge. And who's he? That's, I think it's focusing on my fingers. That's Sergeant Zijin. Um, so I've kept them there to, to leave the options open, but the thought is, is that they will move across here on turn three. So that's going to give them four turns in which to, to take that building. And um, then the rest of the forces are such like this it, um, it's we're thinking moving through here or here now you have to check the lines of sight you cannot physically check them you have to eyeball them so you have to eyeball lines of sight and I think the defender I think could check them um, but as the attacker I'm just eyeballing thinking he's got a line of sight to here so I think we're going to have to and that's going to be cut by that building's corner so we can come up here completely un fired upon and then come round here so within two turns with leader led so each stack there's leader led um and this one's got light machine gun that one's just three squads three squads um by turn two we can get to here turn three we could have wormed our way around to here take him out turns four and five um we take that and then we've got one turn left um to play with Meanwhile, there's a medium machine gun and three squads here. No leader, which is risky. In fact, I'm going to have to send the leader there. So, okay, they will have to support each other. So, with the leader, they're going to come round here into here, and um, plonk themselves here, or, or rather, better still, move around here, plonk themselves here. So they're providing fire against that, and also fire into here. So hopefully, that will cover our eventual assault there that is the plan and so yeah this machine gun also if these units start moving across they will uh, after turn three um when they notice that they're not threatened the machine gun will, will hold them off too so um main thrust here machine gun down the middle to provide fire support and cover and then um tactical reserve coming in to take that one part way through so the Russians kick off first, and just uh, to get us into it a bit more, so we've got Sergeant Zijin, 
Sergeant Orson. Some of these names are a bit. Sergeant Warren and Lieutenant Cascala. So Lieutenant Cascala leading. We got um Major Pigot on the German side, which to me sounds a little bit like Pidget Pigot. I don't know, it's Pidgeot. Pidgeot, I guess. Sounds a bit English to me. But still, Sergeant Krause there. And Sergeant Alonso there. Some Italian connection. Okay, great. That is how it's going to go. So, again, that is, that is half the game of ASL. Analysis, setup. And now we go click and switch on the second half of the game. It's amazing because there's an old um, game called Men at Arms, which is based on medieval warfare by James Donegan, I think Albert Noffy. And uh, essentially in that one, you just set up the units and then you say go. And there's they can't move left or right. They just move forwards and hit each other. Hit each other. Um, there's... Very little ability. I think you can sort of release them sooner or later. But that's kind of like, it reminds me how we've gone forward. It's got more complicated, more sophisticated, but it's not that much difference in that you have the setup. The defender def puts himself in position, the attacker puts himself in position, and then you go, go. So that is, that is really, I don't know what the level above the squad leader, but that is the... Uh, you know, the commander of this mission, this operation, that is his job to, on each side to make sure that, you know, to up the drawing board. So, okay, squad number three, you're going this way. Squad number four, you're going that way. And then phase lines like this. And then that's the first half of the game. The second half of the game of ASL is this bit where um, everything gets dirty and all hell breaks loose. And, uh, and ASL provides so well for that. OK, this is the first move of the first turn of the game. This is what it's all about. I, uh, I had eyeballed... So the Russian felt um, this hex was covered by him. Um, he could find there. And then these hexes were covered by him. So I thought... And possibly this one. So I thought we're not going to f move up here. We'll move it along here. I had eyeballed it, but I hadn't given it a good enough look. So when I check it as they move on, I check and he's actually got line of sight this hex. I thought we were safe and in the clear. Now, because the Russians need to move fast, they need a leader because a leader gives you extra movement. If I'd sent my squads in individually, one of them would have got fast quickly. Then the others would have dragged behind. I want to get heavy firepower to bear as quickly as possible. That might be a costly mistake. Um, if I've moved them up here, they would have been fine, but I decided to move them here. So we actually get a shot off as the Germans. And they've only got a light machine gun. And one, two, three, four. Oh, there's no effective range on the squad itself. Oh, no, they've got range of six. Yes, so they'll be at long range. That's two. And the medium machine gun is going to be long range. So it is a long range shot of three, but it is still a shot. So um, because these guys aren't in the open, but they are. Oh, and they've got. Are they not assault moving? So they don't. The snow jackets don't help them. So I rolled an eight, which is going to be fine. That's off the chart for a two firepower hit, because three is not factored. So we have to go down to two. Okay, so they're all right. They a bit surprised, disconcerted. Sorry, I thought you thought this was. That's in the clear. So anyway, one, two, three, four. So there's no shot there. Actually, I should just check this fellow because he's got some line of sights through this building. Yeah, again, in full ASL, that would have been a snapshot. Hang on. I might even have a line to there. No. And not to there. Okay. So he can't see. So one, two, three, four. Five six. Now he's going to be able to fire, but he'll be firing a hindrance through, um, 
there's orchards and then also into the woods. So he's going to hold fire, wait till they go there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They think that, no, they're not. They can get hit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sorry, seven, eight, that's the maximum. Jonathan, I should have figured that better. I think that's good enough. Um, no, because I actually want them to be here rather than here. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they are somewhat exhausted after that burst of fire and all the running. So similarly, we have a problem as the Russians over here because, um, are we all in shot? Let's just move out a bit. Not doing that much. Sorry, it's difficult to. Okay. Um, so the German unit is in this hex, and the, we're not going to run across here because he's going to get a shot on us here, we're sure. I thought we could run up here, but I think, looking at it, he might be able to hit us here. So we're going to have to be here, which is one hex further away from where we need to be, but for safety's sake, because I'm just eyeballing it, and I, I don't want to give the German the benefit of the doubt because we'll be in the open there, running in the open, which is a minus two benefit for the German fire. So it'll be one, two, three. Now the German could say, I'm going to try and fire there, but there's no point because it's a building. Four. And now we know we're safe. Four. So maybe he should have fired there. Okay, yes. Because I think the German's not going to get another shot out. So, check line of sight. And yes, he does have line of sight there. Definitely no to there. And he just did there as well. So I was right to move there. Um, he's going to need a very low roll to make that. He gets an eight, so no. So one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight. And again, they are exhausted. So that is the Russian. Oh, and then these fellows following on behind. Um, one, two, three. Ah, so there is um, residual firepower in there, which at that range, it's going to be two. Um, and that's a seven on the residual no, so they make it through the machine gun still chattering away. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's as far as they can make it. Um, so I think essentially that's all that happens on the Russian turn because Germans have some defensive fire, but they can't see the Russians. Um, so the Russians will just get an advance in the advance phase. And no right, no close combat, that's it. So we go to see how fast the turns can go to the German turn one. Now they have them some decisions to make. Are they going to move these fellows? Mm, that tactical reserve, they don't know because that tactical reserve could come on there. And remember the idea was to make it difficult to take all three places. But thinking about it now, it does make more sense to vacate one. Maybe now that we've forced the Russians on 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 their plan, uh, so if I sort of manoeuvre these fellows around here, they can cover this one so these guys can't swoop across to take it easily and provide some support on that one, perhaps feed in, but leave that for the tactical reserve to take. And then it, it means that if they're then targeting this one, which obviously they would be if they've taken that one, because these fellows will be targeting that one. If the tactical reserves then go there, they've got so much further. So if they want to take that a song, they've only got three, that would take them one turn to get to there, another to sort of clear through, prepare. If they'd only have two turns, they wouldn't be able to take it. So I think really it says the Russians have to come on there. I think we can leave that one. Seeing as the Russians have committed themselves to this one, that no probs. That's what the Germans are going to do. They can say, all right, 
Won't that one take it? We'll keep that one. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Nice. So uh, let's swivel the board so we get the German point of view. And just see exactly where, how can they move best. The good thing is, is that we can't see the Russians. They can't see us. So I think they, they've got free reign to move at maximum speed down to here. I'll just check that off camera. Okay, so the, being the Russians are in this hex, along the hex grain here, they do have shots into this building as it's passed through. Interestingly, because of that no snapshot, they wouldn't have shots passing from here to here. So um, we can make use of that anomaly, which is fine, you know, in a simple game. You can rationalise it away, but for ASL, it takes that into account. One, two, three, four, five, six. So everyone's running at the moment. Um, one, two, three, four. So the, nothing past there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the furthest they can get with the leader. And then these fellows, there's no one here, so they can go one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There. Now these fellows still have to stay because like I say, maybe if we moved there, then the Russians would just run in here. And it would be sort of as quick as coming on, like, you know, as quick as coming on to here. Um, and really we want them to come on here because then they have to cross this nasty little gap. Do they have smoke? No. Even elite Russian squads do not have smoke. They don't have smoke grenades, poor fellows. Okay. So I, I'm leaving them. We've got enough time to move back. I want him to stay there. I might even send him over here, in fact. In fact, I might leave him here so he can cover that area. They would have to move through the slower move through the buildings rather than running through that building, then through these orchards. Okay, so that is a German turn. Oh no, hang on, go to them. So I, I whizzed through it. Rally phase, nothing to rally, prep fire, they're not. No prep fire. Say that, but hang on. Have we got a shot here? I do believe. I didn't notice. Yes. So the Germans actually have a preparatory fire shot into there. It's just into long range for the squad so that's five firepower which goes to the four firepower shot plus three on a building so they need to roll a four on two to six to have any effect they rolled a seven that's nothing okay well he's not moving anyway and So do these fellows stay there or move there? If they stay, if they go here, they can cover that better. I think we still have a shot there, but we would have more shots there. So if the Russians try to cross to here, if, if we're here, then we can wait for them. I think it's better there. So they're just going to move to there. Um, I might, I might have sh should have left that preparatory shot and moved him over to there. Damn. Should have done that. I could bring those over. Okay, we're going to do that. The leader's going to take some fellows. One, I don't think the Russian has a shot, but let's check. No, that's going to clip that building. So we're safe there in the orchards. One, two, three, four, 
three, four, five, six, seven. We could go up to eight with the leader, so perfect. So that that squad can then cover this open space here. Holding them up a bit more. Okay, but we I want to pull the leader back. Ah, oh, yes, these Germans with their... This is great, because normally you wouldn't... It would be very risky leaving an isolated squad like that. It would be easily engulfed, but with their quick rally, these elite, extra hardy Germans are going to put up a stiff resistance. Okay, so that was the German turn. Advance phase. Okay, I'm going to advance leader back there just get him moving quicker I think I'll leave that there um, might as well advance them do I want him to cover something no I'll advance him I think we're happy leaving that as it is. So we go straight. Yeah, because these fellows are coming around to here. I just thought of a problem is if he scoots across to here and then joins the attack, we don't want that. So I would want someone to interdict him. So that's him, yeah, that will be him. So he's going to be there to cover that street. He would have to take a long way around, which I think would be too time-consuming. Okay, that's fine. Um, so that's the German turn. We move on to turn two for the Russians. So the Russians, um, prep fire phase, no preparatory fire. They all want to move. Um... We're going to move these squads up separately. So we're moving one squad in to soak up immediate fire. Then the others will face residual fire, but uh, so be it. So mm, these are both going to fire on that. It's not going to be nice, but we'll see how it goes. Because um, he's not going to be able to get fire on them. He's going to have to leave them this German squad. So the Russian does assault movement into there. So he only gets minus one for moving, plus three for the um, buildings, plus two. Germans roll with five, six, seven. That's from this first. So a nine on a six is just nothing. Then this they don't get rate of fire on the machine gun. Then this one, that's a nine firepower shot. So it's on the eight column, same mod of fire. Um, we would get a two residual there. They rolled a six with that, goes up to eight. Eight on the eight firepower column is a normal morale check. And there was a seven morale check, so he passed the morale check. And that's going to be a residual firepower of four because we're on the eight. So um, they've both first fired and our oh, rate of fire is two. So no, neither machine gun retains rate of fire. Else they'll be able to fire again with that penalty. Um, so we got f four. So next up is, doesn't really matter, is the... Um, Hang on. Okay, just to uh, check the rules because I forgot uh, um, about Kara. I rolled a double for them, so they actually get a, a flip to final fire. Um, which is not good um, because otherwise they would get subsequent first fire on this next squad moving in. So the next squad moves in, he can first fire again at half power. Okay, so um, he rolls a seventh, so that's not going to have an effect. 
Okay, but I also have to attack with the residual firepower as well as the continuing fire from this unit. And uh, that's a seven, eight, nine, ten. So no effect. So he's alright. And then lastly, the machine gun with the, the leader is going to stay here behind. Six. Uh, he's on final fire now. Could get final protective fire in this phase from him but, and him as well, but that would only be against adjacent. So just the residual firepower, six, seven, eight, nine. That's no effect. Okay, so they're all in there, fine. With the leader ready behind to cheer them on, we can move the counter exhaustion. I can move that, I move it normally at the end of the phase, but no one else is going to move into there now. Um, okay, so those are finished. Now this, these fellows got a problem. They wanted to be coming around here. And now this fellow is there. We hadn't expected that. So it's going to have to be... Um, I'm just seeing, we're going to have to hope he hasn't got movement uh, line of sight into there. I think what we're going to do is we'll move one of these. Okay, the lead, Sergeant Karaskala, what's his name? Lieutenant Karaskaya. Lieutenant Karaskaya says, okay, the reserve guy is one of you forward. He steps out. This fellow says, Sergeant Alonso behind says, look, guys, hold your fire until they send out the big guns. We want to keep them back. We don't just want to pepper off the little guys. And he goes, okay. So that, But we would get a plus minus two on him because he's not a sort moving. Let them go. One, two, three, four. They're CX'd, so they couldn't go any further. Next one, one. What, you're going to let them all go? I don't know. Yes, because that would isolate the send, force them to go there and isolate. So, two, three, okay. They all go across. Now these guys go, what? Right, you're up. But we know that. Yes, I know. Never mind. Um, first squad, and this is how it has to be done. The first squad... Okay, we got to take him out, but we do that, and then these guys can move around here because um, he couldn't fire again at a further unit. He could fire at the same distance or closer. So he's only going to be able to affect one, and it's going to be that one. He rolls a, an eight, and he's moving with assault. I didn't say, but assault movement. No, I didn't say, so I should make it a dash. So that's um, eight goes down to six on um, four firepower. Normal morale check. And I rolled a 12, so he breaks. And actually, ELR's efficiency level reduces, so it's no longer elite status. Goes down to the first line status, breaks. In that hex, and then we had a residual of two. So I uh, know I could fire at a fellow who's closer. Quick glance at the rules tells me, um, but it would flip him to final fire. Um. One, two, three, four. I let him go, and then the last stack goes. One, okay, let him have it. So he flips the final fire, so it's half firepower, so it's two firepower onto there, which would have been the same as with the residual, but if I'd gone in that hex, with it, we'd have taken the residual and his final fire. So he rolls a six. <laughs> I should have um, sort of moved them. Never mind. 
six is down to four. On two five powers, a one morale check and a nine. So the leader passes, but is pinned. So he's going to be stuck in that hex, looking for somewhere to take cover. Six, seven, eight, and does do you get the pinned leader's benefit? I don't think you do. I'm on the morale check because otherwise he would be pinned as well. I have to just quickly check that. Yeah, so the leader's taking cover. He can't help. His units, um, so they are all pinned, which would have been as good as effectively making them do the effect of an assault move. Okay, so that's the movement phase over. Um, and a defensive fire phase, so these are both on final fire, so that's it. He's on final fire, so there's no more defensive fire unless anyone else can get a shot off. Can he could try if he's got maybe through these buildings here you see where's the center dot there no okay it clips the edge of this building so there's no shot there okay so that's the end of defensive fire phase nothing happening there okay um advancing fire phase now this is the interesting bit so he, these fellows all get to fire at half firepower not the mach major machine gun they're quickly clipping it sticking that well oh hang on a minute forgot the russians the portage points of that is five not three so they would have moved a lot slower um one two five, six, seven eight it would have moved two movement points slower. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Effectively, it would have been where... The... No, I sent them through here, didn't I? Okay, I think it's too late to take that back now. But they wouldn't... That's... I mean, but something as fine as that could affect balance of the scene now. Where did I move them from? I can't remember if it was from here or here. I think it was here, wasn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six. There it was there, wasn't it? And I moved through there. So they should have been there. Which means this turn they went there. And then in the... Advance, so I'll, I'll say I'll move them back there. So they only advance, so they moved to there. So the shots from there were the same. That shot wouldn't have happened. And he could then have got a shot off against them. Which would have been a seven. Eight. Seven, six, and all the morale check. And then he would have been broken. So the leader's pinned, he's broken. Okay. So that's how it went instead. Quick backtrack there. Um, and then an advancing fire. So they don't get an advancing fire shot off because you don't get to break down Russian major machine guns there. So they have to be ported, um, made up, very cumbersome. Now he, I believe, gets a shot into there. Does he not? No, he doesn't. And he's broken, so they don't get shots. So that's no advancing fire. Advance phase like that. That. And that. Pinned leader cannot advance. But it's just as well, because in the route phase, now they, they could actually route to here. Because it's no closer, rather than writing back to there. And, yes, so he's fine writing to there. But they have to move to the nearest, so they could go there, there, or there. 
because none of them bring him closer. They cannot write to there. So it's too far away. They take the nearest cover available. Um, I would say it's this. So they at least have the sense to get back there. Um, leaving their leader pinned. Okay. No close combat. So we go uh, pinned in the street. Dear, dear. Okay, so we go to the German turn. So the Germans have nothing, nothing to do in the rally phase, but the Russians get to try and self-rally this one. No, it's a German rally phase, so they wouldn't... Okay, so they don't get any self-rallies, but they do get to remove the DMs. Okay, then the next phase is the prep fire phase. Um, they will have something to say here, so that they're going to prep fire upon these. They could have gone on to the leader, but it's more beneficial those. So they get five, six, seven, eight, firing up four firepower. That's not going to be. That's too, just too much. Okay. Um, he will prep fire. So that's four, five, six, seven. So that's six. And I roll a seven. Eight, nine, ten for the building. That's going to be too much. Okay. So, um, that medium machine gun, it's a shame they're not in a fire group. I should have put him there. Because they, and they could have been on both that building and that building. But not that one as a fire group. So then the Russians would have, well, what can you do? <laughs> um, anyway, did they get ready to fight? No. Um, this one. So that's going to be effectively eight columns. And they rolled a seven, eight, nine, ten. They got rate of fire though. So that's nothing. But then the machine gun gets to fire again on its own. So the six, seven, eight, nine, that's not going to be enough. No, they missed rate of fire there. So he's all fired out. Um. This unit's moving in the street, so he's not going to stay there. Same with them. He's got, I've got none to fire, nothing to fire at, have they? Okay, so that's the end of the prep fire phase. Movement phase. Yeah, so he was going to there. Advance, assault movement. Could potentially get there, and they go to there. Yeah. So he's a sort moving to there. Leader could perhaps have beaten him. No, they're not going to. Okay, so that's him. Four, five, okay. Now my question is, do I keep um, this leader to help with this defence? Best leader, the lieutenant, and send this leader over to help with that defence. So we've got two leaders there and the best leader there. Or else we've got both the best leaders here, you see. So maybe I need to do a bit of switching around. Um, I don't want this leader useless. Um, so he has to be there... I think he can move back like that. I don't remember, I have to check that. Um, I think I'm going to move him over there. And leave one leader here. I don't know yet, I don't think I have to make that decision right now. But again, those are going to stay as they are. So that's movement phase over, defensive fire phase. 
That's going to be this hefty stack. On to that, use your machine gun. Yeah, I think I'm going to need that leader to rally these from there. So they have, they've got the range. Oh no, look at that. So that's 12 plus 4 is 16 firepower. That is strong. And they roll an 8, 9, 10, 11 for the building. Pin task check. So that's the worst result they can, you know, best result, best, the worst good result they can get, or at least it's not a non-result. They rolled a six for the morale, so that no pinned. And they got rate of fire. So they will fire again. Same target. Actually, no, no, just missed there as well. Okay. Um... He can just so he can just squeak a shot along the edge of that building into that hex, but not that one. He's broken. These fellows can fire through here, through the orchard. It's not going to be a good shot, but they do have twelve firepower. That's a lot of firepower again. And they roll a nine. 12, 13, 